We're back, baby. It's a Horns Up Talking Texas podcast. Fisher Tsopolis, DJ, Nikki, Snacks, Kreider, gentlemen. The college football season is officially in the books. The Michigan Wolverines complete their undefeated season, running through the Big Ten, winning the Rose Bowl in overtime against the Alabama Crimson Tide and taking down the Washington Huskies at NRG Stadium in Houston, emphatically scoring 15, 14 extra points in the fourth quarter, winning by 21 at the tune of 34 to 13. McCarthy was decent enough. They ran the ball like crazy, which was much to our dismay, which we'll discuss. They shut down Penix Jr. Their their defense looked really strong, um, and, and they proved to ultimately be the best team in college football this season. From our perspective, watching this as a, as a you know Texas Longhorn fans, guys who report on the team, what were your guys' thoughts on how we would have fared against this Michigan Wolverines squad? Well, I mean, <laughs> glaringly obvious that we didn't run the ball enough in our game against Washington, we should have toted the rock an extra 10 to 15 times because Michigan was gashing them and they really mm -hmm. didn't have to throw the ball at all. Um, a lot of self-inflicted wounds on both sides. Uh, I think, you know, Michigan was letting them back in the game, but at the same time, Washington's O-line was committing a lot of boneheaded penalties that you did not see against, against us. I feel like they were far more locked in in our game than they were in this game, mm -hmm. which is, you know, interesting because this is the bigger stage, but it is what it is. Um, you know, it, it shaped out the way that it did and there's not much you can do about it, but, uh, yeah, I, I think we would have fared a little better. You know, I don't know if we would have beaten Michigan, but I definitely think we would have made it more competitive because I think our run game is much stronger than Washington's. And I believe that we'd be able to run on Michigan's defense. Um, and I believe our run defense is far better than Michigan's uh run defense and i think that we'd be able to contain quorum and donovan edwards um look i at the end of the day I, I can't say that like we would you know hold them to no rushing touchdowns but there's no way they're rushing for over 200 yards on us i mean no team did that all season um and we played against some of the top running backs in the nation so i think that's the glaring you know truth there that that stands out to me the most um i think you'd mentioned josh that you're not particularly, you know, certain how we would fare on offense, which I think is fair. You know, I mean, uh, our um, our approach on offense, you know, sometimes isn't really um, representative of how the season has gone. And so, it, you know, Michigan's got a strong D, and I think they presented a lot of challenges to that Washington O line because those are the best edges that they've seen all season long. They were fast, mm -hmm. athletic, and they couldn't play bully ball. You know, they had to. They had to, you know, try to rely on, um, you know, fixing the snap count and and getting, you know, the the cadence correct, and it was it was, you know, hurting them, and so um, I think that's the biggest thing right there. Toss. Yeah, um, I'll just throw out there, you know, there's a big difference between one month of prep and one week of prep, right? When you know, Kalen DeBoer and his staff had had a month of prep to plan for Texas offense. Um, I would certainly say that, you know, we weren't as healthy. We talked about this when we lost that game to Washington. We weren't as healthy as we wanted to be. We didn't have Jonathan Brooks in that game. Um, Michigan was relatively healthy in this game. Uh, I certainly think that they demonstrated throughout the entire year, maybe, you know, even though they didn't have the toughest schedule, that they are the best team in the country. And so I, w with talking about how we would fare against them, it's fun. But at the end of the day, to me, it is a hypothetical. And this team deserve to be national championship national champions and they won and they dominated in this game um they dog walked the dogs 100 do percent. who who for all intents and purposes dog walked us so I, I know we were one play away but just the the script of the game against washington versus us they out coached us and they outplayed us and they out executed us and this is exactly what michigan did to washington in this game um i <clears throat> there, there's you know th there is a reason and part of the reason is they have the experience. They have the veterans on this team. They have the head coach who will presumably head to the NFL now because he's checked the box in college football, in my opinion, at least. And he did what he needed to do. He won Michigan a national championship. Um, he like, let's not forget that this team also didn't have him for two games and they were totally fine without him because three was it three. Yeah, I think it was three. Yeah. And, and their you know, their O-line coach, right. Is that who took over? The OC, uh, yep. the OC. more, Shador more, more, yeah. Who's who's in charge of the offensive line, I believe, um, as well. Uh, 
you know, and he fared incredibly well. And that just goes to show how prepared these coaches and this entire coaching staff and this program was to win this year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I texted you guys in the middle of the game. I said this game playing out in the exact way that would be most frustrating to Texas fans is absolutely classic for us, right? Michigan mm-hmm. running all over them early, which we threw the ball a lot early and there were a lot of balls uh, swatted at the line of scrimmage and by DBs across the field. And so that put us in in third and, and long situations. Penix missing every throw, right? <laughs> every big throw that he needed that he made um, in the game against the Texas Longhorns, he missed. I mean, that that big one that comes to mind was in the first half where Adunze was up the sideline. He had open space and would have been a walk-in touchdown. And it was just uh, it was just an errant throw. And it was not a catchable ball for a really, really good receiver who's going to go in the top 10 in the NFL, uh, in the NFL upcoming draft. And then I said, Washington dumb O-line penalties too. You know, that didn't happen against us. They were very, very clean. We made the dumb O-line penalties. So I certainly agree with Nick's assessment of our matchup with Michigan is better suited for what the strong points of the Texas football team were. But I'd, I'd also go out and gander that uh, our offense would have struggled immensely against this, this Michigan front who is the most talented defensive front that I've seen from a team all season, all across the board. They had the depth and they had playmakers on the outside of the defensive backfield. They had uh, the, the defensive line that, that schemed blitzes, blitzing packages that opened things up for their speed edge rushers. Uh, I thought their guys in the interior did, you know, played really, really tough. Um, didn't help that Washington's running back was banged up. I thought he was about 50% in this game. I texted you guys. I'm not sure why they're not giving other guys opportunities um, at least if one of our running backs went down, even after Jonathan Brooks's injury, we knew we had a really, really deep running back room with Keelan, uh, with, with CJ Baxter and with, with Jaden blue. So, um, I guess the board didn't have trust in some of those younger guys in the running back room, um, or just Dylan Johnson is an excellent pass blocker and they needed him out there because Michigan was getting so much pressure, but I felt like they really lost an edge of their offense on that first drive when, Johnson re-aggravated his injury and he couldn't cut left or right. There was one play in the red zone. I think it might've been on the first or second drive for Washington where Johnson had a lane on the outside and he tried to bounce it out and the linebacker for Michigan got to him. And I think if he was healthy, he would have, he would have put that one in for six and gotten paid dirt there. So I, I certainly thought that was a big factor, but all in all, it was a good game until the very, very end. Um, Michigan struck early. Washington hung in there. They had opportunities in the third quarter and their offense just couldn't convert. Uh, and then Michigan, you know, blew it open, which is no surprise given that they had been able to run the football. We know how that factors into to games as they, as they go on right in the third and fourth quarter, if you can run the football, a lot of times you tire out that defense on the opposite side, and then you're able to finish them off in the fourth quarter. So congratulations to the Wolverines and every piece of confetti meant something out there, man. It was, uh, it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, one of the most was, ridiculous statements I've ever seemed heard. like he, uh, was throwing off his back foot, like almost every single throw. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that a lot of that has to do with just like getting pressure on the quarterback and, you know, not having time and not being com- comfortable back there. But it just looked like a completely different player than who we saw, <laughs> which is, it's so unfair. <laughs> well, yeah. I think it was ultimately frustrating. I don't think, I think the tail of the tape actually is going to be uh, statistically is a lot different than people would anticipate. Like Washington only had five penalties. It's not like they had, you know, 10 penalties, but it just felt like a lot more. Same number of penalties against us. I know, obviously, that's just like the full scope of it. It's a different breakdown offense versus defensive penalties. But it felt like we couldn't catch a break. And it felt like every time Michigan, like you brought up the Roma Dunes, they missed throw on fourth down where he had him wide open. And he eventually hit, he hits that throw later on in the game, but it's called back for an offensive line holds, which, which was really a, get. which was a suspect penalty. I will say it was a sus penalty. And then he hits him on the third time. He also hits him. Then he connects again with Rome, but he could have hit them on that one and they could have scored a touchdown. It could be, t- it could be a completely different game. We're talking about like Washington yep. could have been knotted up at them. Um, I think they got hit in the mouth pretty early which is something we didn't do. We were playing, you know, talking about playing from your heels. We were playing from our heels the entire game. We were playing comeback pretty much against the Washington Huskies. On Inversely, the Huskies were playing comeback against the Michigan Wolverines. Two big runs from Donovan Edwards, not even Blake Corum, were really frustrating, I'm sure, for our Texas Longhorns here because had we broken out one with Blue and Baxter, you know, we we could have been there against them. I think their defensive line was really strong, and they put a lot of great pressure on him, but they only had one sack, and they only had one tackle for a loss. It's not like they were really convert. The pressure was great, but they're not really converting. 
ultimately what come what it comes down to is the, the version of Penix Jr. that we saw. He hit all his throws. He moved in the pocket great. And the version we saw last night, he had that costly interception, you know, to start the second half. And like we didn't get that. We lost the turnover battle, right? Where Michigan won the turnover battle. And those two turnovers, when you're playing really when all the football teams are kind of even, which I really think is the case, like any four of these teams could have won the national championship. I know Michigan ultimately probably is the best team and they deserve to win the national championship, but seeing all the football played had any of these teams won the national championship, I wouldn't be shocked. Like I really wouldn't have been that surprised at Bama. So like they got to overtime against Michigan. They gave Michigan a better fight than Washington did. Right. And we beat Bama and why it's like even Washington beat us. It's like such a, and we'll see it next year because Michigan, Michigan and Washington are now in the big 10 and they play and we play Michigan. Like, you know, these are these matchups and in the, these scenarios are almost here to say. I know different players obviously will be playing next year. Um, but, you know, it's just it's such a game of inches. It says a couple breaks our way and it's a completely different story. A couple breaks Washington's way. It's a couple. It's, it's, it's a completely different story. You know, if you go the, like Michigan had injuries, you know, on the offensive line, um, but we had a major injury this season. It was Jonathan Brooks seeing what Blake Corum, their best offensive player did against Washington. Imagine what Jonathan Brooks would have done. And I know there's like a lot of scenarios that we had Jonathan Brooks and we had him for a few games, right? Like again, we ended in those are games we ended up winning without him, but still had we had Jonathan Brooks against Washington, it's a completely different story. It's a completely different team. And we're, we could be, a, we could be, you know, every confetti meeting into something to us, you know, on, well, on Monday night. Well, Michigan didn't have quorum last year, which is an interesting one, right? In the college it's football a, it semifinal it, against it, TCU. Health is a big thing. It all matters. I yeah. think, uh, you know, there's a lot of hypotheticals and we can't live in the past, but look, we had two crucial fumbles in our game by our running backs, by each of them, one in the third quarter, one in the fourth quarter. And that third quarter was ultimately the the nail in the coffin for us that took away a lot of time possession in the eight o'clock the entire time. And we basically didn't touch the ball. Um, and then the fourth quarter fumble too is not fun. And if Brooks is back there, you know, Look, I don't know if Blue plays as much as he does. At the same time, he also, you know, doesn't make that sideline catch that he did that was super clutch, you know, in the sure. last drive. Um, same thing with CJ, you know, and I don't I necessarily know that he gets as many snaps as he does. So it's hard to say. I mean, who's to say that Jonathan Brooks couldn't fumble as well? But yeah, it's a different ball game. It's a, it adds an X factor, an element to your game that they need to prepare for. And yeah, that was clearly the Michigan strong suit, and that was probably one of the strongest things we've had all season. And it sucks that you know we we weren't be able to play at full health for that, but that's just the way you know the cookie crumbles. I mean, that's that's college football, that's sports in general. You know, you got to play through injuries. Like that's happens to everybody. And games um, too. It's tough to establish the run when you're down. If you're losing the game, like the fourth quarter, we really can't run as much as we yeah. want to because we're down. The third quarter, you talk about Nick. We we spoke about it, you know, extensively with Quan, extensively on our recap show last week. Like we lost the time of possession to Washington, the Washington Huskies. They had the ball for 36 minutes. We had the ball for 23 minutes. Like that's crazy. That's a crazy split right there. And obviously 23 and a half, 36 and a half equals the 60. It's a really crazy split right there. Like the Washington Huskies were bad on third down against the Michigan Wolverines. They were bad on third down against us too. Like they weren't great on third down. They couldn't run the football against Michigan at, you know, half health. They couldn't run against us at full health. So I think against Michigan, I'm curious to see, like, again, there's a lot of faces changing. We don't even know if Harbaugh is going to be there. So it, it's less of like, oh, we would have beat them. Like, you know, had we been there last year? But I, I think we would have given them a really – I think the tests would have been super interesting because I'm really curious to see how our offense would have come out against their defensive front. We have a good offensive line, you know, and, and, and how all that would have played out. Had Quinn come out on skate and somehow converted that touchdown and, and to A.D. Mitchell late in the game and, the, you know, the script was flipped, would that have changed his and Sark's approach? Would they have come out swinging? Would they have come out hotter, more similar to the where they were at the Texas Tech and Oklahoma State phases? Um, but it's definitely interesting to look at it, you know, had we been there um, versus like, you know, obviously losing that game. So I, I, th I think we would have given him a good fight. I do want to say I, no discredit to our our defense um, because we were able to stop Dylan Johnson and, and do what we did all year with their rushing attack. Yeah. The pressures that we had, and I know the number ended up being what over 20 in that game. Mm -hmm. They weren't even they weren't in the same caliber of pressure, hurries touch touches <laughs> they got their hands on Penix. oh he got hitting hurt. him hitting him, <laughs> after, hitting him after plays whether they only had one sack or not it, it was not in the same category 
of, of what the Michigan defense was able to do to him and to make him feel uncomfortable. And I just like that, that to me was the one distinction. I, I know our DBs, you know, played relatively good football as well as they could have against Penix and, and these wide receivers who are so talented, who still displayed their talent. Like McMillan had a really nice touchdown catch. Polk had a couple of plays in space. Westover was once again, effective for them in converting third downs. Um, but it just wasn't the same, the pressure that Penix felt in, in this game against Michigan. And so yeah. I just, I, I, I don't like how, I don't know how anyone could watch that game and say it was the same because it wasn't. No, I don't know. I don't think it was, it was a very different game. Like, yes, you could go again, like the tail of the tape, like tackles for loss and sacks. But I think, you know, if you, the eye test that kid, Mason Graham, the sophomore from Michigan, like that's a real NFL, NFL caliber, like three down defensive lineman. You know, like yeah. I think going into the the college football playoff, Chris Jenkins was the guy that was heralded as the pro, right, for this upcoming class, a second round pick potentially. But I think Mason Graham going forward, he'll be back next year, is a guy that's going to get some first round hype. Um, and he was once again, after being a menace and being the defensive MVP for the Rose Bowl, he was once again an absolute monster for the Michigan Wolverines against like, a, a really strong Huskies offensive line that's going to have some pros. Yep. So yeah, that's where the dust settles. Uh, Toss, you were right, talking. Just, oh, sorry, just one last thing because I was mentioning when I texted you guys about what was most frustrating as a Texas fan. Of course, uh, Alex Orgy from Saxy, Texas, their backup quarterback for the Wolverines, who we will see next year when we go to Ann Arbor. Got in there as every good coach does when you're building a dynasty. You get your your backups in in important moments. Mm. He got in there. He ran a, a kind of like semi quasi wildcat ran for 20 yards up the left sideline out of the gun. Uh, we will see him. He's a mobile quarterback. That already scares me for our matchup with them next year. Um, they and, used and, him this year. He had 15 yeah, carries this year and a score. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, and it's great that he got in this game. Like, He, our, seemed, he seemed competent, and, and most importantly, the fact that he's from Texas was just a little more insult to injury to me as I was watching that game. So I like the fact that we're playing the national champion next year. I think that's great for us. You know, it's fun. Yeah. Um, you know, you know we're, obviously, we're playing – the last two national champions are playing last three, actually Georgia twice and then Michigan. Yeah. Um, so this could be a really good season for us to, to build off of. Are they losing more stars than we are? You think it depends if it's like JJ, like, cause McCorm and Edwards will go and that was their yep. two strong, their, their two strongest players. So, and Chris Jenkins on defense. And, will JJ's go, and, gone. and I think, I think maybe I, after winning, going 15 or no, you know, look, he tossed, he's still you projected first round. Yeah, Toss, you've mentioned him as a runner and like really trying to highlight him there. And like he had that one massive play on third down where he ran it up the gut and he looked fast as all yeah, hell. Longest run so of I, the season. Yep. Yeah, so I think that there's there are teams like picking on the back end. We'll see what we'll see how Seattle mo maneuvers around the board. We'll see how Vegas maneuvers around the board. But if these teams start dropping back in the NFL draft and then they're picking in that 20 range and they're down to take a kid that has to maybe hold the clipboard for a year and they believe in his skill set and they believe in his talent. Um, I think there's a chance, you know, that JJ McCarthy goes. And I, I think that we're seeing a very different team ultimately, like at the end of the day, like we have banks as our left tackle, he's coming back. And we really think he's a top 10 pick. We have viewers who could be a top 10 pick at his best. We have both the running backs that were playing well, minus the two fumbles. And those are glaring issues in the sugar bowl. Both those guys are coming back and that doesn't, and that four, our, four to our five offensive linemen are coming back. Anthony Hill, our favorite defensive player, their young guy who's going to take that hopefully next step up to elite talent in college football. He's back. We have a lot of we have a lot of youth on the defense that's coming back, um, where they're losing guys, and then we have a, a lot of our offensive line and a lot of our running backs. We'll have yeah. to figure out a way to replace those wide receivers, but maybe it's in the building. We just haven't seen it yet. It's I, yeah, I give us I the edge there, Nick. To your question, though, yeah, I no, I, I do too, and I think you know whatever happens to Harbaugh, it's tough to. It's tough to uh, keep the culture, you know, this consistent and the same when you're bringing a new head coach into the up into the building, you know, unless it's a guy who's already been there for for a long time, you know, they could hire internally. Um, but I mean, Michigan always likes to make a big splash. And if he ends up leaving, like there could be some turmoil there for a little bit. You know what I mean? They might have a little bit of a hangover from the national championship. So I, I yeah. definitely think we're going to have the edge in that game. It is going to be in Ann Arbor, so they might be favored by a point or two but we'll have to see how it shakes out next season but it's gonna be an exciting matchup um pretty pretty fun that we're actually gonna get to play them and not just play them when we're you know 
Texas of five, six years ago and Michigan of five, six years ago. It's it's now when oh both yeah are good and they're hot and both coming off of being in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, some quick news just before we wrap up. Keelan Robinson declared for the draft. So another Longhorn that'll head to the draft. Uh, kudos to him. Great career with us. You know, did basically everything that he's been asked of. Didn't complain, didn't transfer, you know. I mean, ultimately he transferred from Bama. Um, but you know, he's a guy that we've been high on since he came stepped on campus and yeah. great special teams player, uh, you know, great gadget back. Um, so hopefully, you know, he finds himself on a roster and someone can utilize his talents the right way. Cause he's got blazing speed. And then, uh, another, uh, transfer is visiting Texas, uh, Oregon state wide receiver Silas Bolden. So nice. Another guy that, you know, could potentially be, be coming in the building to add to the mix that we talked about yesterday. Um, was it Weston and, um, or, or sorry, Wester and who's the um, USC guy? CJ Daniels. Oh, from, oh, oh, yeah, Dorian Singer potentially. Dorian but then Singer. CJ Daniels yes. is visiting Austin this weekend, and he's Liberty's yep. uh, be- best wide receiver, who was the only Conference USA receiver to have over a thousand yards and double digit touchdowns. So he had a really effective yep. year uh, for them. And then I believe we have another. Uh, Kendrick Blackshire, who is a linebacker for Alabama, is is visiting us as well. Ooh, he was a, nice. He was a special teams guy, but he's originally from Duncanville. So oh. um, we've seen, you know, in the last couple of years, transfers who have joined uh, the the burn orange and white, oftentimes played high school football in Texas and are coming back home to play for the Longhorns for their third, or fourth, or fifth season in college. So great. Um, yeah, that definitely. You know, Jalen Ford's gone. So any extra linebackers that we can bring in would certainly be helpful. Uh, and I think just the last thing that I'll mention with the season now officially wrapped up the AP poll end of season, AP poll came out and we were ranked as the third team in the country, which is the first time that's happened that we've had a top five season ending finish since 2011. So that's a huge, that's, that's a huge deal for our program. Huge deal for Sark. Um, and congratulations to the Longhorn and all that they accomplished this season. Can't wait to yeah. see what they do next. And to answer a uh, final answer on your other question that you asked earlier, Nick, I looked at ESPN's like way too early top 25 rankings and we're number two. So for Georgia, what, uh, Georgia, right? yeah, behind Georgia for what it's worth. Like, so I think they have a lot of faith in the guys we brought in in the transfer portal and the guys are returning. So I think the lowest I saw us was at CBS had us at seventh. Um, and the highest I saw us was second. A lot of people had us at three. I think we, so, what's our, I think we're like fourth or fifth in national championship odds, right? Yeah, I I, I think we were, we're fourth last there. time I checked at betonline.ag. Use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V. Nice. Oh, 50% <laughs> off on your first deposit there. Tell them. Yeah, go bet on the horns for next year. Yeah, it's it's us, Georgia, Bama, because they return Milrow. We'll see what Ohio State, Michigan people always have faith in them. And then the the sneaky ones are Oregon and, and Ole Miss. Not, not like the sneaky ones, but Oregon right. and Ole Miss. Well, them. the interesting thing. Quit Sean Jenkins, uh, Judkins ends up at with the Buckeyes in Ohio State. Went from Ole Miss to Ohio oh, State. Yeah. So Trevion Henderson declares for the draft. Um, they have a, a great replacement back there. And obviously they brought in Will Howard from uh Kansas State, who played pretty well against us. Should be interesting. All right. Yeah. Fisher to Sopolis, DJ Nikki Snacks Crowder. We'll see you guys manana. Get your horns oh, up. <laughs>